Right, hello, welcome to our first uh, Res session of today. Um, I am John, I'm from Res, I'm just here to do the introductions. Uh, so this uh, session is all about how to survive as, uh, as a yeah, games artist. artist. Uh, we have two, two artists, artists, as you can see, they're both alive, so they have survived. So this is great, uh, you know, supportive story ahead of you. Um, so uh, please, if you could give, give them a warm welcome. Yeah. Hi everyone, can you hear me okay? Great. Uh, so I'm Lucy, this is Amanda, we'll do the introduction things in a sec. Uh, uh, we just want to talk to you about um, how we got into the industry, how we became professional artists, and uh, maybe give you some tips on how to do that as well. Freelancing and, the, and studio. <laughs> <laughs> so we took more time on this than we did on preparing the presentation. So like We're it's going to be like you know a bit chill, a bit of chat at the end. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I guess I'll, I'll me first. Uh Amanda, as I already said. Um oh, my headphones just fall off. Sorry. <laughs> a minute. There we go. Yeah. Uh, Amanda, uh my pathway into games was uh pretty straightforward almost. So I went to university and actually studied animation when before the big video games like course boom, because uh, that was really the only option to get into games really or films. But I ended up in films actually doing like stop motion modeling and like post production VFX stuff. And I only made the jump over because I actually love games like really nerdy, far nerdier than the film lot. So retrained through online study and about six months later end up getting a job in a studio. Hi, uh, my name is Lukia Kiriakilu, but uh, people call me Lucy. Uh, I have been drawing since forever. I, I don't know when people start drawing, I assume two sounds right, uh, so I wasn't sure what to put there. Uh, uh, I, I was born in Greece, I was right there, uh, raised there, and I uh, went to Teesside Uni in 2007 um, to study computer animation. Uh, and while I was there, I discovered there's a big gaming community and game dev community. And I was like, oh my god, people actually work in games? I didn't even know that was an option for me. So I slowly shifted uh, my goals, my portfolio, everything towards games. And as soon as I graduated, I started uh, being self-employed. And I've been doing it ever since, so for a while now. So this is just basically a brief overview of kind of what we're going to be speaking about. Um, so generally, how many people here are students or starting to look for work in the room? Quite a lot of you then, yeah. Um, I don't know about your courses specifically, but most courses that I see students from, they uh, generalize to help you understand every part of the game's making process. Uh, so basically this is the T-shaped artist or T-shaped um, game developer. Usually you will be taught all these things, but when you leave you're expected, or, you, or ideally you should be looking to focus your um, skills to help you find that job. Um, so yeah, it's becoming the expert in that field. It is your thing that you are awesome at, and, but you are smart enough to understand everything else. So this is an example of both of us. Um, for me, I do concept art, but I also train in 3D environment art, so I use a lot of 3D to help me with my concept art, and I have a background in graphic design, because I used to freelance doing that when I was a, before uni. Do you want to? You want to swap because, like, you're on this side, and I'm on this <laughs> side. So, da -da. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is mine. So, like I said, I started doing animation. Now I leave it to people who are way more talented than I am. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about that in a bit. Uh, but I generally do concept art and 2D art. Uh, so, because I work with a lot of indie companies, sometimes that includes like from concept art to like doing all the way to final assets for the game. Uh, but what I specialize in is characters and character design. That's like my like 90% of my work. 
Right, I'll start off. So it, I'm going to be talking about how to help you find work in a game studio, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, but basically... <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I've got one clicker between us. Yeah, I, I um, did say I didn't want to have this, but... <laughs> um, but basically, yeah, uh, if you're looking to get into a studio, uh, a lot of things I don't... I, I don't know about the courses I taught nowadays, but you usually don't get asked questions like, what do I want to do? What style do I want to work in? What kind of studio do I want to work in? You just kind of go out there and try and find your way, or just any job will do. Um, and the best way to help you build that portfolio is to just, yeah, have a, have a real hard think of what do I want to get the, out of my career? Is there a studio I want to work at? Is there a IP out there, like, I don't know, something like Alien that, that you want to work on? And you gear your portfolio towards that. So, like, for example, there's nothing wrong with a varied portfolio, but the varied portfolio uh, will make it difficult for you to apply for that job. So when you do have that, and you want to work on an alien game, you put only your, well, if it's a realistic take on aliens, which it usually is, you gear all your realistic stuff towards that. And like the horror and the creature art and sci-fi in general, and you don't put things in, in it like uh, fancy characters and elves, because they will hire the person that has the portfolio suited for the job, and there's not much time in a studio to go trawling through hundreds of pieces of work you may have produced. Um, so yeah, these are some questions you should ask yourself. And I always ask uh, students when they come to me for portfolio reviews, what are your end goals? What makes you happy? Because you need to be happy in this, in this job to produce really great work. So this is me. Um, so like I said, I've been freelancing my whole life. This was really interesting to do. I've been wanting to do it because I love seeing what it's like on the other side but I wouldn't change what I do for anything. Um, a lot of what I do is uh, to get work, is uh, networking, meeting people. And I know that, that can be scary, but like some people like me really enjoy it. Uh, but there's still ways, even if you're not that comfortable, to like slowly get out of your comfort zone. And um, like uh, I started with uh, local meetups uh, when I first started working, I was not really doing anything. I was hoping work would find me. It was just insane. Like, uh, so then I started seeing what other people around me are doing. And like I said, I was based in Middlesbrough at the time with Teesside, and I saw there's a community there. So I started asking, it's like, oh, what's happening? Uh, I found out there were uh, little like, drinks events in the area. So I started going to those. And if there are, you should really look into it, like talk to the right people, like anybody who you think is uh, going to know. It's usually like word of mouth, a lot of these. Uh, so go to those, speak to everybody. Uh, don't just go for people you think have like these fantastic studio jobs. You never know who you're gonna meet. You never know who you're gonna work with. Uh, people tend to give work to uh, like artists or whoever they like. Uh, everybody likes to work with people they actually like. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just be pleasant uh, and introduce yourselves. Like everybody's there to network, so you're doing them a favor by going up to them. Um, she has one point of that with your whole um, being nice to work with. There is always those three things: time management, skill, and pl how nice you are. And employers will more than often go for the nice over the other two. Like. But we'll talk more about this later as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I moved to going to bigger conferences. Uh, a friend had a ticket for develop, and uh, he kindly offered it to me, and that was my first experience meeting, like being in a room full of developers. That was that was really exciting for me. Um, again, don't talk to people who, you, like, don't just talk to the big studios. Go out. You never know, who, like, what people are working with either. Uh, sometimes they'll really surprise you. What indie studios do. And for me, that's where like, a lot of passion comes from, like for myself in the industry. There's uh, portfolio reviews. I know Amanda does some. Uh, so it's really hard when you're starting out to know what the industry is looking for. So ask the industry itself. Um, and once you go to these, connect with people online, uh, talk to them on Twitter, 
Uh, I say Twitter all the time because like that's where I get a lot of my work. Uh, but LinkedIn as well. Mm. Like yeah, I, I get know, I get a lot of students through LinkedIn because yeah. it's very professional. Yes, it is a professional site. Or it should be. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, get, I will get messages and can you help me with my portfolio and stuff um, or give me advice on what to do, where my skills are. Because mm. sometimes you work so hard on your core skills, you kind of get tunnel vision and blinkered and you just need someone there to tell you you're really, really good at this or I think you need work on, to yeah. work on this. Yeah, yeah, so Amanda's much better the professional <laughs> side than I am. <laughs> I like Twitter because people get to know me and my personality. And uh, I post a lot of rough work, I post a lot of silly things. I was uh, drawing people, like uh, some dev friends on the train down here in fancy uh, Victorian dresses, which was uh, really fun. But it's, it's about making these connections and it's about reminding people that you're there. Um, if somebody's like, oh, I'm looking for a character artist, and your work keeps popping up on their Twitter, you're gonna be the first person they think about. So that's, that's who you want to be. And uh, before I continue, I really wanna say a story about the importance of um, having friends in the industry, because uh, contacts seem a bit too professional for me. Like, contact is great, but it, a lot of times it goes way beyond that. Um, and uh, I work with a studio a few years ago, oh, many years ago, like seven years ago. And uh, I met a producer who was only there for a few months. And then she moved to um, working on, uh, she moved to Fail Better Games. And that's how I started working with Fail Better Games. Uh, and then some, she moved on. Now she's making Cultist Simulator, which is fantastic. This is Lottie. She's brilliant, she's like my savior in the industry. But um, a few months ago, she put me in touch with somebody and now I'm working on Battletoads and the team is over there to support me. Uh, so, or heckle me at the end, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's about like, it's, it's, it's all about who you know. It's a very small industry. And uh, again, it, go back, it goes back to Everybody will recommend you if they like you. Mm. Uh, so yeah, just make these connections. And uh, like, I never see Lottie, for example, um, but we talk to each other online all the time. Uh, it, it's really important to keep the relationship going. Uh, it's really hard to see people in person. Everybody's really busy. So that's the way I spend a lot of my time on Twitter, like too much. Uh, so this is kind of a roundup of um, building the portfolio. Uh, so when you put stuff in your portfolio for both sides, make sure you only put the most relevant bits in your portfolio. So if you want to be a character artist, go all characters. There's a lot of times I see portfolios where they say, I'm a 3D character artist, yet there's only props and environments in there. Why will I hire you as a 3D character artist without that stuff? Um, Presentation. It, presentation is more important than you actually think. Because if you, um, for example, for 3D models, if you don't light it in the nice, in the best way you can, um, they won't look good, or you might catch something off, like a broken normal that you might be able to escape <laughs> um, in like a decent lighting or the perfect uh, presented position um, for the work. Uh, and what's most important. Uh, especially for a concept artist, is like the, proce the process of getting to that final thing or how you come up with your ideas. Yeah, we just, it, we just like to know how your brain works and whether or not you'd fit in a team or the team, any team really. Yeah. Uh, or the project as well. Yeah, like, the project. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but authenticity as well. Um, so obviously there's lots of students, you work on a lot of group projects together. So um, when you put stuff on your portfolio, be be very, very clear on what it is that you did on that project. Because nothing will be more embarrassing than going to an interview where they called you in because they liked something that wasn't your work, and you tell them in that interview, oh, I didn't make that. Yeah. It's happened uh, before, so well, <laughs> I, fair warning. I have an interesting story about that, because I had uh, um, somebody I knew from uni come to me, and I was like, can you look at my portfolio? And my own work was in their portfolio, and there was no credit to anybody else. And I was like, oh, that, that's great. That, this is, I really like this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, for concept art, for, for me, it's like I want to see that real world stuff. It's like it's awesome drawing wizard butts and sexy elves and whatnot <laughs> all the time. But if you really think about it, a lot of the games out there have that grounding in reality, like the, the humans are still humans, despite maybe having magic powers. A chair is still a chair. Um, it's really important you, you understand these things when you create it. And this goes for both 2D and 3D. As I said, I do 3D as well with my work. So, um, But it's also highly beneficial, especially for people just starting out, to keep a sketchbook or a sketch blog, because usually your portfolio is not very filled out yet. Um, and for me personally, I know a few other people as well uh, in the industry, when they look at uh, hiring someone new, they want to see their work processes, and the best way to see it is their rough sketches. Like you can see the soul of an artist through that. <clears throat> yeah. Another thing, concept art. Please show us concept art, not not just your illustrations. Illustrations are amazing, um, but we need to see that process, the thumbnailing, the uh, like mid poly level and stuff, and then all the way through to <laughs> like final. Um, but yeah, it's really. I find it really sad that I keep getting all these amazing portfolios and go, oh, God, the illustrations are so nice. But I can't trust that they can do concept art because they don't show me it. For all I know, they could have lifted the painting off the internet somewhere. Yeah. I mean, it's very similar with uh, character design. Uh, so uh, the basics are really important to show that you know. Uh, so I do a lot of life drawing, and if you want to get into character art, like even if it's um, animals, uh, whatever, you really need to have um, a link to reality, no matter what you're designing. Uh, so show people that you know how to do that. Uh, it's gonna make everybody's life easier. Like um, even if, like it, it's to you, you're like, oh, it's a little bit off, but like that may cause issues later on the pro uh, in the process. Um, Storytelling. Uh, I was uh, at a talk from Atom Hawk uh, a while ago, and they were showing these amazing designs for a character they did uh, with uh, amazing clothing. And then they were like, and we picked this white one. It was like a girl who was wearing like the plainest like uh, triangle white dress. Uh, don't I, I have a bit of a beef like with um, like JRPGs in the sense that they make people think that this is what you need to be designing, like adding belts and uh, pointless things. Nobody dresses like that. And it works for a certain setting, but this is a very <coughs> small setting. What you need to think about is what impression uh, your character is going to make to the players the first time they see them. So if somebody has a lot of uh, scars, for example, you can assume like they've had a rough life or They've been in an accident, but think about those things. Don't think about making a, a beautiful looking design, but it needs to be the thought of functionality behind it. So this is from a project I did uh, for Far Few Giants called From Afar, and I, I always use it as an example uh, for portfolio because this, like when students ask me what I should be putting in my portfolio, this I feel is very important. It shows you can be versatile. It shows you have ideas, because uh, a lot of uh, character design, this is where you spend most of time with, not cleaning up. Um, I also like to do um, uh, action poses and expressions, because that's going to really help uh, the next person uh, in the process know what is in your head. Uh, so. Uh, for example, like, well, making games is a team sport, so it's usually someone else, someone, I'm going to go back to Battletoads, some way more talented than you, 2D animators who are way more talented than you, are going to take what you're doing, and they're going to make it move, so they need to know what you were thinking when you designed certain things. Yeah, animators are just out of this world. Like, I know, I know. Th they just make us look like poop. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's also a time where there needs to be a dialogue with other people. And I know it's really hard to show in your portfolio, but uh, iterations, mm. uh, that's why it's really important to show that uh, you head around a design and then either feedback or your own critical uh, look at what you created 
and uh, how you went from that, how you dealt with that. Actually, add on that, it's like, as well with having all those thumbnails, it's like, you can, if you're in a studio environment, you can, someone can go, oh, you, you should try this, it's like, oh, I've already tried this, it didn't work in a thumbnail stage already. So, yeah, um, it, it backs you up, that's what the, the whole thumbnail process is. Easy, fun, and you explore lots of ideas very quickly. Um, I'm going to talk so very briefly about environment concept art. Unfortunately, I can't show anything I do <laughs> because I'm under NDA. Um, hopefully, hopefully not much longer. But I'm going to show an example of someone that works at Splash um, Gears, and this is basically how I take an environment art, uh, the environment art concept process. I work um, a mood painting to get the, the look and the feel for the area, to get everyone a little excited. And then I start drawing in the props and the assets and the, ex the expectations of wear and tear on like, walls, window shutters, and stuff like that, which I can hand over to um, 3D artists and go, go away, here's your mood painting. This is what I've made that needs making, and here's the look you're going for, the small details and panels. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all you need, uh, a 3D team should need, to be honest. Yeah. And that's, that's what you need to show, that you can work well in a team, and like how your concept can be translated mm -hmm. later on in the game. What next? Ooh, what is next? <laughs> what is next? What is next for them for bullet points <gasps> in this one? <laughs> Put together a portfolio. Um, um, no. You've got to have someone to show it to. Um, before you send it out there, it's always good to like, test it out and like um, ask your peers, uh, your colleagues, or even emailing people on LinkedIn <laughs> to be like, can you look at my portfolio and, and just see what, if this is a good portfolio for what I want to do. Mm. Um, but highly recommend that. Like, yeah. Because self-critique only goes so far. Uh, I mean, a funny story, I think I did one with Amhawk when I did industry workshops because I know I get blinkered by my, what I think is my own failings. And the thing I thought I was failing at most was um, lighting. Like, I thought I couldn't light characters. But then they actually were, like, came around and was like, actually, your lighting is just the strongest thing in your work. You just, it's fine. <laughs> it's yeah, like, it's, okay, it's cool, It's really thank hard you. to look at your own work yeah. sometimes. Like. Self-critical, that's what artists yeah, are yeah. at the end of the day. And you need someone else to just kind of give you a slap and be like, no, yeah. you're doing good. <laughs> Also, we talked about, like, Amanda talked about, like, uh, more like applying for a studio and what people want to look at. Uh, and I said a lot about networking. But know that no matter what you want to do, like, what path you want to take, both are equally as important for both <coughs> paths. Or, I don't know, is there a third path? I don't know. But, like, There's the one that flits between, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, 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 a little bit of both. Um, but, yeah, and there is one important rule that most presentations, uh, in games do have, and there's still be a but. <laughs> we had to change the but. Yeah, we it were. was meant to be something else, but obviously uh, we weren't sure about the age. Yeah, yeah, family <laughs> <the> friendly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the industry is small. If we had talked about this, if you are not a nice person to work with, the industry is going to find out eventually, yeah. and then the work will stop coming in, or you will yeah just struggle in general to hold down a job. And it's not just to work with. Uh, so when you go to events, I know there's a lot, a lot of alcohol involved. Uh, if you do drink, I mean, then. Uh, and it's okay to again be personal, like meet people. Like it's, it's not that it's not like the suit and tie kind of industry that everybody's like uptight all the time. Uh, it's it's a chance to like go like see your dev friends, meet other people, um, but always be professional in the sense that, like how you conduct yourself. Because that's also a way to get you blacklisted. Um, a lot of people have had bad experiences, and that the, the word goes around. Like, if you've done something horrible to somebody, or if you feel somebody wronged you in any way at an event, speak to um, other people, and everybody's so supportive mm -hmm. in the industry. Uh, yeah, it's almost me. like a the game dev Me Too movement. It's like this happened yeah. to me. Oh, Me Too. Yeah, Me yeah. Too. Yeah, it happened yeah. to me too. Yeah. It, it, it word travels quick, mm. and those people are not gonna. Yeah, just <laughs> even online as well. Like, uh, just careful what you say. It's okay to post pictures of your cat. I enjoy that content, uh, but when you're confrontational, sometimes we all have our own views. 
be careful not to cross a certain line and not make it personal uh, because well I, I know a lot of devs are online uh, and on Twitter I'm gonna go back to Twitter but uh, I, they, they will look at that and uh, just know that it really affect if you're applying for a certain job it really affect uh, how they see you mm, yeah actually with Twitter like personally for me <laughs> I, it's, it's pretty much near, yeah. <laughs> but yeah personally for me like I do not I have political views but I do not put them all over yeah. Twitter you don't know who it is that you're working with or want to work with that might not agree with you and then decide to not hire you based on that sole reason alone if you want to so have a personal Twitter and have a professional Twitter if that's something you want to push out there into the ocean yeah, yeah. but just, yeah. just be nice to people and yeah. like be considerate to people that's really important in any aspect <laughs> Of, well, of your life in general, but like uh, related to the industry as well, if you want to get a job. So that's us. Well, yeah, we've got through it. it. Um, yeah. We've got, <laughs> we got time for questions. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, yes, uh, we, we do have time for a, a few questions uh, from the audience, if anyone has any. Oh, right up front. Okay. Hi. Uh, sit down and take questions. Do you want to swap waters? Yeah. Yeah, I can have a water now. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Um, Hi. My name's Paul, and I'm in the uh, early stages of uh, an indie uh, studio. Um, I guess, can you give me some advice um, from someone maybe on the other side who would be hiring uh, and contracting artists? Uh, what kind of thing could you do uh, to make sure it's a fair uh, and a beneficial a process for both people, both sides. I, I think it's important to put your studio's um, needs uh, kind of ahead and uh, make sure what you look at fits what you want to end up with at the end. Mm -hmm. But do give people a fair chance uh, to prove that they can do uh, sort of with our test. Uh, that's also okay. Um, Sorry, I missed like uh, the first part of that question. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, Imagine. I'm struggling the hair. I today. know it's I'm really showing my age. Yeah. So you just repeat the first bit again. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm looking for advice on how to have a, a kind of a, a fair and beneficial transaction, both for the other hiring the, the, the company who would be hiring an artist and also the artists themselves. I guess I'm looking more the like the contractual side and, and things like that as well, maybe. Oh, is this from uh, you? I, I'm, I'm, an in, I'm a, yeah, an in okay. the studio, but I'm more technical side, uh, okay. not artist. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that, really. It's pretty <laughs> much going to be exactly the same thing yeah. you said. Also, like, uh, recommendations, that's how I get a lot of my work, like mm -hmm. I said earlier. So uh, speak to others and see this is what you're looking for. They, they're usually really happy to recommend people. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, uh, that the, yeah, please do that. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Did we... Do we answer the question? Uh, yeah, no, that's great. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and also, anyone. Um, networking's good. If you'd like to say hello to me, uh, my name is Paul. I'll be at the front, probably asking more questions. <laughs> Next question. Awesome. Um, yeah, thanks for the talk. It's very informal. Uh, well, yeah. um, in terms of publishing a portfolio online, where's the best places? Um, in the past, obviously, you would see a lot of deviant art, but if I was to see exactly, exactly, if I saw a portfolio coming in from someone on deviant art, I would just say no. At the same time, it's just like if a one of our internal recruiters would actually look at a portfolio from deviant art, they wouldn't maybe not be able to access it because of any internet um, safety checks or whatever. So. For someone that actually sees a lot of portfolios from yourself, where's the best place to publish one? ArtStation. Yeah. ArtStation is like the thing if you want to get into, especially uh, AAA development. Um, I also personally think you should keep up a, keep your own website running as well because um, I know before ArtStation, ArtStation was created off, um, I've forgotten the name of it. It's like a cube something, but it was the art station before art station, and then it went down, and everyone lost their portfolios overnight in the AAA industry. <laughs> so yeah, it's like your own website, but people love art station, especially with all those like the amazing um, Marmoset viewer tools in there as well for 3D art. 
Um, it's like the best way to check out someone's work. Yeah. Highly recommend for 3D artists do it. We'll like you a lot more. <laughs> so I, I'm terrible at updating my art station. But I have my own website as well, so that takes priority. But then I try, as, uh, when I can show things, I, c I try to update my art station as well. But yeah, definitely, those are the two art station and your own website. Those mm. are yeah, I, I'm terrible at art station as well. I'm sure if I was lo well, looking for another advice. job, <laughs> I was like, if you're looking for a job, it's amazing. It's just, I yes. guess I wasn't looking oh, for yeah, work. Yeah, but I'm happy yeah. where I am right now. <laughs> Uh, there are artists out there who have very, very distinct, very unique styles. Do you think it's a priority to try to distinguish yourself from the crowd and establish your own style, or should you just aim to be as technically proficient as possible? Can I take this for a bit? So, um, so I think it's a hard one. It's important to have your own style, but if you want to go into freelance, you need to show that you're versatile as well. And uh, even having your own st uh, style, it still should allow for some versatility. <laughs> it's much easier to get a job. But if you're looking for a specific studio that does this specific style. Mm. Um, yeah, it's like um, if all you really do is draw Angry Birds style stuff and you're going to want to go work in Call of Duty. Yeah. Yeah. It, you've just got, you, you've got, if you want to go somewhere, you need to work to that thing. And the best way to mm. do that is go on ArtStation and check out the people that work at those companies and their portfolios. It will give you a really good idea of what it is that happens within the walls of the studio. It just limits your options. That's the thing we're having yeah. a very, it, you can still find a lot of success, but it just really, like, it, it's harder to get there. Yeah. Hi. Um, I know, Amanda, you mentioned how you do 3D as well as 2D. I don't know about you as well, Lucy, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm a student and I came in already doing 2D and I'm learning 3D and I was wondering if you had any kind of like thoughts or advice on kind of balancing the two different mediums in terms of what you put in your portfolio, if you mix them together, if you have separate portfolios and kind of what it's like with that balance. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, so to be, to be clear, I, like I used to do a lot of environment 3D art but I don't anymore, so my portfolio doesn't have like just straight up 3D art. The only thing like properly 3D that's in it is it's part of the concept art. So for me in environments, I find it much easier to explore through a 3D program to create the space to be able to walk around it and know what the player is going to see. And then I use that base, I set like all my lighting and everything, and then draw over the top of it. Um, but that's in the sense of what I do is a as a concept artist that uses 3D. Like, I mean, one time I designed a, um, a gun and I just ended up taking up like high, high intense detail, high poly, which I was like, oh, I'm gonna bake it down and try out the new um, substance uh, painter and designer because it's a new software that I haven't caught up with and I'd really like to. Hiya. Hi. Um, would you say it took you a while to sort of find your niche? Um, and was it quite a difficult journey to figure out what exactly what kind of artist you wanted to be, like what sort of thing you wanted to make? Um, so when I started freelancing, like we'd talk about all these great things, uh, but that came with a lot of hard work to get to where we are and to uh, get to tell people how to uh, hopefully do the same. Um, so when I was, uh, when I was started, free when I started freelancing, uh, it was, I did whatever like, art job I could uh, get to, but then it's important to try and, as, as you get stable, to like filter what you want to do. And you usually find that wh while you work on different things, that's how I discover what I enjoyed. And take what you also like as a hobby uh, I think it's important for people to do what they love uh, and like take the hobby and turn it into a career. For me, that's like that's what I did. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I mean, it took me a while. Like, uh, obviously, I got into games doing 3D and 2D, and as a journalist in a studio, a very small studio. I think it was like 10 people at the time. Um, I actually only fully went straight, like only concept art, in the last two or three years. Before that, I was flitting between um, UI design, I'm oh, sorry, UI, uh, UI and UX, 
and also doing concept art and helping out with 3D and level design and little bits like that. But yeah, now I've just I've I've found my niche because I didn't think I was going to be only a concept artist because I always loved doing everything. I know I already said you need to have a very focused portfolio, but yeah, I, I'm one of those people. It's like I like doing everything, but I try and focus it where it needs to work. What can you not do? You can do three D <laughs> and UI. Just time for two more questions. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I was just wondering, when starting in the industry, often you'll um, start as a junior. I was wondering if there's anything you think that differentiates a junior from a actual artist or professional artist in the industry. What no. differentiate a, a junior from a So, like a so like what would change, what would have to change to move from being a junior to being an actual artist or a professional artist? Well, uh, if you're hired in a studio as a junior artist, I would already say you are a professional artist. Uh, anyone that says otherwise, well, I don't agree with it personally. Um, but yeah, the, if you're hired in a studio, that is your professional life on the like on go. Even yeah. when you start yeah. doing freelance, you are professional the moment you conduct yourself as a professional. You call yourself the pro a professional. It's the whole um, fake it till you make it sort of attitude. Um, but yeah, that you are a professional when you decide it. Yeah. Like no one needs to tell you. And also, nobody says, oh, now you're a senior artist, or now you're yeah. not a junior anymore. It just comes with experience and like, uh, just getting better, better at what you do. No, mm -hmm. that, that's really cool. I'm basically wondering like, how to get paid more oh. is, is essentially so, what it is. You know, that's really good. You, like, you, you mentioned that, because uh, I think it's really important to talk about money in the industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, um, uh, a report was compiled by Lottie that I mentioned earlier. Um, and people put in what they make. So it's important to look at what others are making and ask others. Uh, just go and ask for money. I'm, like, I, I freelance, like, I, if we don't talk about money, we're wasting each other's time. Mm -hmm. like, uh, so yeah, just go and ask and be like, look, I feel like after so long, obviously justify it, don't just go, like, mm. make sure you've earned the money. Um, but uh, yeah, d don't be ashamed to talk about money. Just be like, look, I feel like I've earned it. I would like to progress in my career, like from junior to and it's more money. It is different from uh, studio to studio, because obviously some studios will promote through years of experience, but never necessarily through experience, if that makes sense. So you can get uh, senior artists that don't conduct themselves as seniors or, yeah. or uh, look after like, people, because senior artists have to do a lot of looking after of, of staff and everything. Um, but then some other companies will only promote you to senior when you prove you can do that work. Um, I think it was the case for my company. Like, I was like, I do all of this. Can I have a promotion now, please? It's like, yeah. give, and they were like, yeah, give, give us six months, we'll keep an eye on you, and then yeah. got it. <laughs> make sure <laughs> they know that's where you want to yeah. be. Just make sure they know. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, the, our last question. Oh, hi. Um, hi, uh, so, what are your experiences dealing with intra introverted people in like the workplace? So I know for myself that I'm quite, I'm quite good in in in, in, in like a team teamwork exercise and stuff like that. But in terms of social, it takes me a while to work up with that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like you looking at me. Yeah, I'm, we, had, we had this joke. Well, joke. It's true, really. But we all laugh at my expense. Um, I'm actually quite introverted. I, public speaking terrifies me. Uh, it's taken many years to get to this stage. So thank you for bearing with us today. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you, can, uh, you can get there. Um, it, does, it, does, it takes practice and like just building up your own confidence. Because yeah, I, I'm one of those people who'd rather be back at home, misting my ferns, watching Netflix, while petting my like, lizard on my shoulder and feeding him worms, <laughs> rather than going out and partying with everyone. <laughs> Uh, it, it's also like I think a lot of people uh, in the sector tend to be introverted. Not everybody, but it's just the nature of how we grew up. Uh, I guess with like games, so some people maybe didn't develop. Well, that's not what they do. Like that's not, and people are not what they're interested in. Uh, 
But uh, when you're at networking events, again, just you doing others a favor and just be like, excuse me, can I join your conversation? So don't go to somebody like who's alone um, mm -hmm. if you don't feel comfortable with that. Just join a bigger conversation mm -hmm. and then slowly insert yourself in that. It's, it's like a... And then you'll Back make way. friends, and then you'll see your friends at the parties. Like, yeah. I met you through people I knew, and you were just there because they knew you, and yeah. here we are. Yeah, and <laughs> it's, yeah, usually you'll meet people through people, so just, uh, just meet a couple and then just let them do all the work, like bring the others around. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is why it's a small industry. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> this is why it's a small industry, because, yeah, we yeah. all meet each other eventually. Yeah, and if there's somebody you do want to know, just be like, does anybody know this person? Can I mm. help me? Can yeah. you help some, help me out, please? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, don't be afraid of that. Actually, yeah, ask for help. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so that's uh, all the time we have for, for Q and A. Uh, but uh, Lucy and Amanda are up, up here if you want to have a, have a chat with them in person uh, uh, as as we file out. And there's Paul over there if you want to pitch for work. Uh, but <laughs> thank you very much uh, to uh, Lucy and Amanda.